As early as 7 a.m., the entrance of many schools were choked. At Infantipim School, the news team observed that a dedicated online portal had been created to speed up the admission process. The process included verification of data and allocation of dormitories. For us, we are doing our registration online. So once you are placed here, give you a link, you go there, do everything there. So as you are coming, you will come and submit your forms. And that is very easy to do because um, either go to the dormitories or the assembly hall, just submitting the field forms and that's it. So from tomorrow, we're going to have orientation. That's why they will teach them what to do here and how we do our own things. Parent expressed satisfaction with the process. My son was awarded general science and we just got in about some 15 to 20 minutes now. And the process is quite smooth. We here do the registration. I guess when we are done here, we we'll go to the administration and get the whole process done there. Then. Yeah. It's quite smooth here. The situation was different at the Holy Child School. The manual process of registration left many parents and their wards frustrated. And I think most of them should join. It's very, very slow and it's, it's, it's getting irritated. And some people too are crossing here and there. And I think something must be done. The network is very bad, but everything is moving on smoothly. There should have been indication on the placement that uh, uh, parents should have uh, gone to their various schools and then uh, perhaps uh, acts of how to get the uh, admission forms and so forth and fill and so forth. There wasn't any indication of sort that sort. And in the Ashanti region, the introduction of a standard and uniformed prospectus by the Ghana Education Service has been lauded by parents. They say the removal of some items has helped cut costs they would have hitherto incurred. It was all joy for most of the first year students who are eager to begin their senior higher education journey as they report to school on Monday, December 4. Hundreds trooped to Kumasi Secondary Technical School to register. Parents were satisfied with the arrangement and the move by GES to review the prospectus. For those years back, the items that we were putting in were not too much. But so far, I think. We shall manage it. At Sakafia Islamic Senior High, most students are here to report, but parents were in to check and pick up the admission letter of their children. We are fully prepared for them. We are in school, everything is ready. Everything for them, fact, they've also started coming. But at the Kumasi Technical Institute, where a solution center has been set up by the Ghana Education Service to address issues regarding school placement, Frustration is written on the faces of parents and their wards. While some want their school changed, others are now fighting for placement. Over 100,000 students did not get placement in any school nationwide. Parents should exercise a little bit of patience. Every child qualified will be placed. Every child qualified will get a school and study. So we are appealing to them Today is reopening day. Uh, it doesn't mean the door is closed. We are here this week, this week, until last student is pleased. The Ghana Education Service wants parents to show interest and be involved in the selection of schools for their children. Ibrahim Abubakar, TV3, Kumasi. Meanwhile, hundreds of potential senior high school students still face placement challenges. Many applicants and their parents were at the Nat Hall in Accra in a desperate bid to secure a senior high school spot. Judith Brown has the rest of the story. It's been barely two weeks since placements were released for prospective senior high school students. And although students are to report to school, effective December 4, behind me are a myriad of parents who have come with their awards as a result of various placement challenges. We chose the residency to be boarding, but they were given day. And looking at the distance, we had to come here and make sure their school is changed. Um, we are coming from Tema, but the school is given at um, Adan Senior High. And that's very far, so we are here to change the school as well. 
But here at the Nat Hall, challenges such as no placements, change of school, change of status, that is from boarding today or vice versa, and change of program are being resolved. And evidently, the number of people here are overwhelming. Well, despite the fact that there are no continuing students in school as of now, and amidst the various challenges you can see here at the Nat Hall, students are still supposed to report at their various senior high schools today. Some here believe that this is unfair. You cannot say you've released the results last Tuesday that just passed. And you, want, you expect us to go to school then just today. The, you know that the economy is in a bad state. And you know that nowadays in this era, just to get money is very difficult. You have to work hard. For many, the process is hectic and the hopes of getting their problem solved are bleak. The books where we are supposed to select the schools from are limited. So it's like we are in a queue waiting for um, books to select schools for him, which is also wasting our time. Actually, we are also workers. At, we work. So we have to go and then we have to do this first and then go and follow our work. Judith Brown, TV3 News, Nat Hall, Accra. Let's speak to the executive director of EduWatch, Kofi Asari. Thank you so much for your time. Kofi, we've heard the complaints from parents and management of the school singing a chorus of insufficient time for preparation. Meanwhile, the education minister in parliament says there was enough stakeholder engagement with parents. Is the Ghana Education Service's decision to insist on the December 4 reopening date justified? Um, well, I... I think that we've gone beyond the justification of the reopening date. Um, as indicated um, countlessly, we, we are running a senior high school program, which is still not the ideal. We still have double track or we are in transition, okay? And so ideally, one would have hoped a parent would have been in one month to plan ahead after being placed, after the awards being played in schools. But unfortunately, because we are running a transitional calendar and we are struggling to catch up with the rest of WIAC member countries, since 2021, we haven't written WASI with our counterpart from Sierra Leone, Gambia, Nigeria, um, and Liberia, okay? So we are running catch up. And there's a plan in place to ensure that by in 2025, the current Form 2 students will write WASI with West Africa. And then in, in, in 2026, the current batch, those who are going to school now, will also um, write WASI with West Africa. So yes, we agree fully that ideally, parents should have had at least a month or about a month to plan on the quickly. But in view of the objective of catching up with West Africa, and trying to reset our academic calendar to the pre-COVID levels where teachers could plan their vacations properly, parents could plan their vacations properly, et cetera, et cetera. Until we get there, it will definitely involve sacrifices, which includes having limited time to prepare for school. It's unfortunate, but we will begin to reap the benefits of having a much more predictable academic calendar after we've managed to reset our academic calendar in line with the West African one and in line with the traditional Ghanaian academic calendar by 2025. Is three weeks enough to close this deficit? Last year, schools reopened um, in February. Okay, schools reopened in, I think, on 20th February. That was the reporting date. So if we are reporting on 4th December this year, it tells you that about six weeks deficit has already been chopped off. And that's a significant gain we must be proud of. Between 20th of February to 4th of, um, um, of, um, um, of December, it's, it's actually it's at almost two months, almost two months. And we must be proud of the gains we've made. That's why I'm saying that we are all sacrificing. But by 2025, when we are, when we are able to start our academic year in September, and write WASI in June, everybody will have a much more predictable academic calendar to plan, especially our teachers who have been working under very, very, very stressful circumstances, especially those who are teaching 
uh, certain subjects in noble track schools mm. and also parents. But until then, we must appreciate that the main beneficiaries of resetting our academic calendar to the pre-covering pre levels will be the students themselves. All right, Kofi, thank you so much for your time. And Kofi Asare is Executive Director of the Africa Education Watch. In a related development, the Education Minister, Dr. Yao Osei Edukum, in Parliament earlier today, justified the decision to allow the opening of senior high schools for first-year students less than a week after placement in spite of a request by the Speaker of the House for an extension of the date. He told Parliament that there had been sufficient engagement with parents. Early on, on Monday, uh, had directed that the Minister of Education, Dr. Yao Osei Edichum, reports to the House before it's 12.30 midday or else he would be dragged before the Privileges Committee. Well, shortly thereafter, the Minister zoomed into Parliament, readied himself to respond to the several petitions that had come to the Speaker and also to MPs who have called on him to rescind the decision of the Ghana Education Service vis-a-vis -vis the Minister of Education to have schools reopened on the 4th. But shortly after the back and forth, the Minister came under heavy criticism. I don't believe that the Honourable Minister of Education would disrespect a house that he is a member of. But that's what he has done. Knowing that, knowing that he has been summoned to appear before us today, what stopped him, what stopped him from waiting instead of asking his PR unit to issue that counter statement which put parliament on a collision course with his ministry I thought that that show that show of power that flexing of muscles the honorable minister is my very good friend and he knows when he knows that one of my qualities is that I tell my friends the truth and I tell I tell them in their face so I thought that the Honourable Minister will explain to us why he did what he did. If we have them, that they about 10% or 20% had reported, then we may have a cause to complain. But not when the students are already in school. Do we, do you, do we want the Minister to direct the Ghana Education Service to now call the students that they should come back home and then we give another time for them. Mr. Speaker, this will lead to absurdity. I don't think we need to disturb the academic calendar, especially when the minister has said that we would want to go to the pre-COVID session. Well, eventually, the minister justified the reason why he had to insist on the reopening of the schools on December 4th. As at the time of placement release, 477,000 772 candidates representing 81.56 of the students who qualified for placement ha, um, were automatically placed. For the first time, the Ministry of Education, with its relevant agencies and stakeholders, developed a national harmonized prospectus for all senior high school and TVS students. And the same was published in the Daily Graphic on November 16th, 15th, 2023. The purpose of the publication was, among other things, to give parents ample time to buy the prospectus items and get their works ready for school on December 4th, 2023. Mr. Since the introduction of the double track calendar in 2018, a lot of teaching and non-teaching staff have been employed to lessen the workloads in our schools. As a matter of fact, the majority of teachers are only at post when a particular track is in session. So, Mr. Speaker, it cannot be true that all teachers have never had any rest since the double track was introduced, as alluded to by my honorable colleague. The Speaker of Parliament then indicated that there was little that Parliament could do. We can no longer insist that the fourth December date be shifted to the first week of January. That is, that today be shifted when the students are in school to the first week of January. We'll take it as it is. 
but we will ask the ministry together with GES to take this into consideration and not to insist that the students and parents should comply with some of the requirements within this shortest possible time. They should give them enough room to be able to fill in seamlessly so that we can have a smooth academic year. Comme la culture, TV3 News, Parliament House, Accra.